Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Welcome to the online service for Swissome Park Primitive Methodist Church. We're so glad you're here, and we pray that you will be both encouraged and challenged today by the hearing of God's Word. I will be reading this morning from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, and that's on page 1445 in the Pew Bible. 1445. Micah chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. Now gather yourself in troops, O daughter of troops. He has laid siege against us. They will strike the judge of Israel with a rod on the cheek. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. Therefore he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and this one shall be peace. When the Assyrian comes into our land, and when he treads in our palaces, then we will raise against him seven shepherds and eight princely men. First of all, thank you, choir. Thank you very much. I just appreciated the, the music. Isn't it amazing the things that God uses to draw us close to Him? Creation, food. Think about how many times in the scriptures as they gathered around the table to break bread, and I'm not talking about the Last Supper, I'm talking about just being together. And music and food and creation are just amazing things that God has put together for us to draw close to him. And so I I really appreciate, Krista, your effort as well with this and each one who participated today. And we do want to be mindful of those who could not be here today because of of sickness and uh, just not able to be part of it. But they practice hard, and that would be Ron and, and Patty and Paul, and and Janice. So just keep those individuals in your prayers and how important this was for them as well. And so we just uh, want to be mindful of them today. But we give God glory for his word and for his message. Thank you, Krista, for reading. And I'm going to ask that you would all join me together as we pray. Father, help us this morning. We pray to understand more of your word. And may it encourage our hearts, may it challenge our hearts, and may it cause us to understand more than ever what it means to be a child of your, of your holy kingdom. We pray and ask all this in the blessed, mighty, holy name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen, amen. and amen. So help me, if you can, the past couple weeks as we've been considering what Advent is all about. By the way, don't you just love the banner? I just love that Advent banner, and in case you don't know, that was made by Barb Simon, and Barb, uh, along with all these banners, uh, she has donated them to the church, for which we are very grateful, but as we think of Advent, and now here we are in this third Sunday of Advent, if, if you haven't determined up to this point, today for a few moments we're going to consider peace. We're going to consider peace. But what were the other two things we considered up to this point? Do you remember the previous Sundays? Hope and joy. I just remember the response last week. I thought someone said, nope. And, uh, but it, it, was, it was hope. Hope and joy and peace. And do you see how they connect together, at least in my mind? Because if we have no hope, if we have no confident expectation of not just this moment, but for the day and the weeks and for eternity, sometimes joy is really hard to find. 
Joy is hard to experience and understand. And this morning we pray that in the midst of this journey, that in our hearts we can exemplify and understand what it means to have peace. And that means even when things aren't going the way you want it to go. How many of you every day get up and everything goes the way you want it to go? Okay, you can put your hands down. How about the other ones? Duh. Thanks, Bill, for your brutal honesty. Unfortunately, we, we have many difficulties and struggles and trials in life. At times, it makes the road difficult. And this morning, as we think about the passage of Scripture that, that Krista read from the book of Micah, you see, Micah, first of all, it, it, it's, a, it's a book filled with, with judgment and also hope. Could you imagine sitting in a place where all you got was judgment, judgment, and nothing to look forward to? That was kind of like grade school for me. Okay, uh, we were always in trouble and always deprived and removed from it. Anybody else associate with that one too? Ron, thanks for your honor. Yeah, okay, there was no hope at all. It was just judgment and the wrath of, and I could, I, I could still see all my teachers, and, and this one teacher, she used to come, and, and she was a, a, an older lady, and she wore the big black shoes, you know, with sort of that raised heel. You didn't call them high heels, they were just shoes, okay? And, and Bill, you're, you're perking up right now. Does that bring back a nightmare or? Yes, recurring. Ron, you good? Okay. Back, okay, you throttle it back a little bit. But, but here, the, the, the scripture gives a, a mixture of judgment and hope. Because in, in the midst of these things, as it announced judgment on, on Israel, and, and, and notice the judgments. When you read through this, this book of Micah, there were some social evils going on, even with God's people. We don't see that today, right? In God's people, with God's people, as Micah was addressing, there was corrupt leadership. Don't see that today. Okay? So you think of, of social evils and corrupt leadership, and, and then finally, idolatry. Those three things were huge as Micah was addressing the issues and, and trying to have Israel understand, hey, wake up! And idolatry, you may not see somebody sitting robbing some golden calf, but idolatry is simply what? Something that we put between us and God. Something that simply means more to us than He could ever be. And so in this world today, we think of all the words that Micah was bringing to Israel, but you see, on the end of these things, this, this message of, of, of judgment, but also a, a message of hope, is it, so important for us to understand because in the midst of these things, the last verse that Krista read to us from verse 5 was talking about someone who was going to be what? Peace. God gives us, God gives us warnings. Do you, do you believe that? I do. I'm thankful for the warnings that God gives that hopefully because of that I can get my head on straight. And, and, and because of that, because he doesn't want us to suffer his wrath. And so the book here in the prophet makes this very clear that judgment is certain. When you read this, and we're trying to just give you a quick overview of Micah, if you read this, if, if you fail to heed to, to these warnings and to this declaration, guess what? His judgment, his wrath, it's certainly, it's coming. But yet, there was a provision made. Just as you and I had the provision through his son. We can accept him, we can receive him, but if we reject him, Paul declares for the wages of sin are what? Gumdrops and lollipops? No. It's death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you glad today when you read about judgments and we think about the nightmares from elementary school? I'm thankful for discipline. I can't imagine where I'd be today if I wasn't disciplined. I can't imagine where I'd be today if, if I didn't have that restraint over me to try to have me understand and, and wake up to the reality. And isn't this what the prophet is calling? We discipline because we love. 
God help us today, we live in a world where discipline's not even in the vernacular anymore, and we replace it with something else. But when we read through scripture and we see this whole concept of, of peace and what Micah was talking about, it's because of God's love for us. God knows and understands that if we continue along this path, if we continue along this journey, if we continue focused upon these things that aren't giving us peace, what happens in the end? He knows that sin will destroy you. And sin will not allow you to understand life to the, to the extent of hope and joy resulting in peace. And this promise, just as the prophet was declaring for for Israel is for all those who by faith do what? Have an expectant heart and a desire to obey his word. So this morning, talk to me. When you say peace, remember I've told you how many times this is all my mother ever wanted for Christmas. Peace and quiet. Growing up in a home with with seven males, and all of our dogs were too, I think. See, that's all I want. And so today, in the hearts of individuals throughout this congregation and this community and, and around this land and around the world, do we really, not really, really know what peace is? What is it? We read in Scripture many times, the Apostle Paul says, may, may the peace of God, may it pass understanding. Marcia, as we grieve the loss of, of Les and extend our sympathies to your family in this hard time, we think of how many families this week, Ron, you uh, and your family, when you think of uh, Tom's passing. That's hard. But how can the peace of God, what does that do? We know that peace, as the scripture defines it, is Security. It's harmony. It's tranquility. And you put all those things together that I can rest comfort in the midst of things that may not be what I want, but I can have this in my heart to know that it's okay. Because it's from God. Like I shared with you last week, I didn't count all these references to the word joy and rejoicing. We said that there were how many references in the scripture to that word? Do you remember? Anybody want to phone a friend? Okay, who need No. Over 300 times. Today, I didn't count these ones as well, but the various forms of the word peace, guess how many times they're found in Scripture? 429 times. Now, you can start counting them if you want. But the simple, the simple, the simple, simple points is this. The word peace, as you read it through the scripture, well, first of all, Elizabeth, what does peace mean in, when you're in Israel? Well, how do you say peace? Shalom. Shalom. And, and, and what does that typically mean? Sure, sure. And, and, when, and when you think of all these things, throughout the scripture, the word peace, the word gives us this understanding of a relationship. Our relationships. First of all, let me ask you a question. How are you at relationships? Okay? Think about it. Relationships take work. They take effort. And when we read in Scripture the word peace, and we find there, particularly in the Old Testament, it refers to relationships between people. It refers to relationships between nations. It refers to relationships between God and people. And so this morning, could I challenge you just in those three simple areas? First of all, how's your relationship with God? Are you at peace with God? Let me ask you this. How's your relationship with your country? What's your perspective of nations around the world? How's your relationship with others? Think about that today as we consider the scriptures teaching us and, and the, the word of, of Micah and all these things that were coming into play and the pending judgment because of, of the social evils, the corrupt leadership, and the idolatry that was consuming them. 
And at the end of the day, isn't it safe to say there was no peace? That's why when Christa read in verse 5, and this man shall be like peace. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. He is our peace. Elizabeth was sharing with me an Advent study she was in at Liberty, and, and, and one of the, the concepts as she talked about peace last night, we're driving home, and I said, well, did they have this song, He is our peace, who has broken down every wall. He is our peace. He is our peace. Cast all your cares on Him. Why? For He cares for you. He is our peace. And so the, 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 the words of, of, of judgment weren't just that, but there was a promise of hope because of Jesus, who is our peace. So first question, how is your relationship with God? How is it? On a scale of 1 to 10, and, and you don't have to hold up your hand or write it down on a card or submit it in any way, but between you and God, between 1 and 10, how is it? It's a wonderful thing. Relationships are critical upon communication. But you see, a lot of people think they know God, but they don't. You know why? If they've never come to know Christ. There's only one way to the Father, and how is that? Through the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father, how? But by me. And so this Christmas season, as we proclaim the message of hope, but there is a consequence for rejecting. Just as Micah made it very clear in these pending judgments of God upon the people because of the corruption and the evil that permeated through them, here is your answer, and it's Jesus. John writes, if we say we have no sin, we are what? Patting ourselves on the back? We're right? We're liars! And the truth is not in us. But then in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, he writes, if we would do what? Confess our sin. Jesus, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To stand before the throne in the presence of the Holy One. All rise. How can I do that if I don't know Jesus? How many people today would truly understand what peace is in their heart when it comes to relationships with others, when it comes to the perspective of nations, our nation, and around the world, if first of all we can know who God is through Jesus Christ? Do you know him today? And if you, if you do then how is that relationship? The second question, again, we'll ask is, how's your relationship with others? People that you work with. People that sat around your Thanksgiving Day table. People that you go to school with. That person that you just dread to see. How much... In our heart, do we believe what peace really means? If we fail and desire to share that with others. A guy witnessed to me the other day, passionately. I was just taken by him. I, mean, I, I, you know, sometimes you go in the aisles and you don't know if you broke the one-way rule. And it was like people were coming from everywhere. And I didn't know where the arrow was, and he was looking at me. And then he just started talking to me about something that he said, this is the bomb. Me and my family, we love it. We can't say enough about it. My kids can't wait for me to, to bring this. And, 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 and we, it, it's, it, it, he almost said it this way. He said it, it almost changed our lives. And he's going on about this very passionate. And I, and I didn't know this guy from the, the other guy. And the other guy, we, like our buggies were all locked up there. But he was so passionate to share this message with me. And, and, and I didn't know what to say. And then he said, you know, 
and it only cost 72 cents. And he was talking about Mountain Springs Pop. I was in Walmart reaching for a bottle of Mountain Dew. He said, this is better. And it's only 72 cents. And he went on just telling me this in a passionate way. And I was so convicted, I got a bottle of Mountain Springs and put it in the buggy. He didn't care if I was a diabetic. He didn't care if I take insulin. He didn't care about anything. He wanted me to know how passionate he was about Mountain Springs. And it was 72 cents. Versus $1.25. And then I was sort of feeling fear and compelled, and he was watching me, so I reached up, and guess who I ran into on the way out? The same guy, and he looked in my buggy. <laughs> and I did this. <laughs> this guy didn't know me from Adam. Didn't know my background, didn't know what I liked or didn't like, didn't know my political position, didn't know where I was or wasn't with God, didn't know anything, but he was so passionate about something he believed in, he witnessed to me in the aisle of Walmart about a 72-cent bottle of Mountain Springs. And I'm going to tell you what, it spoke to my heart. It spoke to my heart because there's people I wouldn't say a word to, let alone about a bottle of pop and an off-brand. And 72 cents. But it meant the world to him. And I can tell you, I walked out of Walmart, and that's all I could think about. How many people do I know that I need to be that bold with? And I need to be that direct with if I really love them and am experiencing this peace of God in my life. And to say, my family, Krista, Elizabeth, Sarah, it's the bomb. <laughs> he was so passionate about 72 cents. And sometimes our lips are sealed for eternity. God help me to understand my relationship with others is predicated upon my relationship with God and that peace that I understand with Him. And you know what happens when we see our relationship with God cemented, enabling us to go and reach forth to others? It makes us better citizens. And in the case of Micah's decree to the people, how different would things be if Israel was standing and proclaiming the message against the social corruption, the, political, the, the corrupt leadership, and the idolatry because of their love and commitment to Almighty God? It would have been a game changer. You and I can make things different in our country by having the passion of the man in Mountain Springs. Think about it. It might sound crazy, and it is kind of extreme. Dennis, you made that. No, I didn't. It was real. But how can you and I make a difference in our nation? How could the citizens of Israel make a difference? It's all predicated upon our walk and our relationship with Almighty God and how we see one another. In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You see, in my relationship with God, in my relationship with others, in my relationship with my country, I should make every effort to do what it takes to make peace. Isn't it sad that the day that we live in, how people have hunkered down and the lines have been drawn in the sand, and regardless, and unless this and these demands are in place, this will not happen. And I'm not saying that we compromise the gospel, but I'm also saying the word declares as well in Romans 14, verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things that make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify one another. That guy in Walmart thought he was edifying me by telling me all about Mountain Springs. The 
things that we say and the things that we do when it comes to promoting peace with God, with each other, and with our land. Where are we today? Paul continued in Romans 12, verse 18. He said, if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peacefully with all men. What's the standard? What's the rule? Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, and it's simply this. We have an obligation, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, to do this. Or 15, excuse me. To let the peace of God rule in our heart. What are you allowing in your heart today to rule you? To control you? To rob you of that peace that breaks down every wall? To rob you of that certainty and that calm and that tranquility and that security and that harmony in the midst when that news wasn't what you wanted to hear? Did you ever wonder sometimes, how could somebody just sit there in the midst of these things and feel that way? Friends, that's a manifestation of God's peace. Even in the midst of the storm, Jesus was calm. The disciples were coming unglued. But there was a calm, there was a certainty, there was a harmony, there was a tranquility inside him because of knowing what was happening. I don't know what's in front of you today that's challenging you in the peace department. I don't know what's causing you, causing me at times to just become overwhelmed and for the wheels to fall off and all the things to just come undone in our life to rob us of the peace. But friends, if we would simply seek and allow and look for these things that comes from God, the fruit of that is simply this. It's harmony, it's tranquility, it's security in the midst of anything that life can throw at us. Hope joy, and peace. We pray that these are part of your life in such a vibrant way that this season of Christmas can just abound in your life. It's not all about judgment. But Micah also gave them the promise of hope. Jesus, peace, do you know him today? Please pray with me. Father, we love you, and we praise you this morning for the message from your word. Help us today to know and to understand and to experience the peace that does pass all understanding through Christ Jesus. Today, if we, we don't know who Jesus is, we certainly cannot know you. So today, if we feel upon our heart the need and desire to know you, today may we just pray now for Jesus to come into our heart, for Jesus to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to allow the power and might of the Spirit to work within and to produce that process of peace and rejoicing based upon hope because of Christ. We love you and we praise you today for the victories that will be won and for the peace that will be understood because of Jesus as we believe and accept this and proclaim it by faith in his mighty and matchless and holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, go to SwissHelmParkPMChurch.com.